Hey guys, welcome back. It is day three and we are gonna start off by opening NetBeans. And it's gonna load, we're gonna work on our car again. And I'm gonna be showing you how to do an if else statement, which I'll talk about later, but basically it's another tool you have in your toolbox to help you represent things in code. And so here's our car class, it's still loading. And if for some reason your car.java file isn't here, you can go to your car, open this little tab, car package, and then go, and this is our car file, which contains our car class. Now, if this isn't here for some reason, and it might be because if you do control click and you close it, not delete, but close, it'll go away. You can retrieve it again by doing file, open project, and then going to wherever you saved it or wherever it's stored, open it and it will come back. This may be helpful if you're working on multiple projects at the same time and you don't want this to become a huge list of projects. Right now we just have our car project, but in the future you might have more. So just to review, last time we created a car class up here. And so a car class is basically a blueprint that tells us everything that's in the car. So a car has special properties, it has facts about it, this is how we describe a car, and then it has ways to change those properties, to change the name of the car, max fuel, max speed, stuff like that. And those are called instance methods, and those are down here. We can change things here, or we can print things and see what the values are. Like we talked about last time, not every car is the same, and so this is a blueprint. It tells us the tools we have in creating a car, but not every car is going to have a min speed of zero, a max speed of 100, such like that. And we can use something called a constructor to create custom cars, as we can see here. We can give them custom max speed, custom weight, custom everything, and have separate car instances. And so, down here, we created one birthday car and changed a bunch of things about it. First, it had only one person, and then it had four people, and then we took some people out, and we printed all of the variables, all of its instance variables, its fields, its properties that were specific to the birthday car, and we saw how they changed over time as we used methods to change certain variables. But now that we kind of know the difference between a class, which is a blueprint that gives us all the tools, all the properties, tells us what defines a certain object, versus an instance, which is an actual object, it has all of these properties, you can change them, and it's tangible, versus the blueprint of a class. And so the next thing we're going to do is add another method. So if we hit enter here, go to the end of our methods, and add something right here, we'll do public, void will be the return type, and then we will do turn the car on, open close parentheses, open bracket, hit enter, that will close the bracket. And here we are going to turn the car on. So if we scroll up, we have this variable called is the car on, and it's a Boolean, and right now it's set to false. And so unless we change it, it's going to be false, or if we customize it to true, it will be true then, but initially defaultly, it will be set to false. And so we can call a method to turn the car on. So what we can do is we can say, is the car on equal true? And the method's done. But what if the car was already on? Well, then we're setting it to be true again, and it's kind of repetitive. Well, we can use something called an if statement, and that will say, like, if the car is already on, then we don't want to turn it on again. If the car isn't on, then we want to say, is the car on? We want to set that to true. And so we can use, like I said, an if statement. And an if statement, the syntax is kind of like if, and then open parenthesis, then you put a condition there and you say like, is the car on? What's your condition? You put it there, close that parenthesis, then you have open, close, curly brackets, and inside of the brackets, you put whatever you want to happen if that thing is true. So this is a lot to talk about in theory, so let's just do it here. And so we'll say if, and then we'll call the property is the car on, and then we'll say if it equals false, meaning the car is not on, then we'll do curly bracket enter. That'll close the curly bracket. We wanna set it to true. We wanna turn the car on. And so what this does right here is if the car is on equals false, meaning the Boolean up here 
is equal to false, then it will be set to true. Otherwise, it must have already been true, so we don't need to set it. Kind of makes sense? Now, you might be wondering what this double equals means, and what it means is that here, when we do is the car on equals true, we're doing an assignment statement. But we also want something for equality. Well, we do double equals for equality to say, is this thing equal to this thing? And so that it doesn't get confused with assignment here. And so other things that you could put here, because they're Booleans, the only thing you can do is, are they equal or are they not equal? The idea of something being greater or less than with the true and false doesn't exist here. And so we can say not equal by doing the exclamation point here and then the equal sign right after. So because is the car on can only be true or false, if it's not false, it must be true. And so that can get kind of weird, but we'll just say equals equals false and then is the car on true. Now what is inside this right here, this condition between the two parentheses, it must be true or false. And so you could put one here or you could put, I don't know, 15, if 15, and it's not going to, it's not going to recognize it, it's not going to know what's happening. And so you have to put, is the car on equal or equal false. Now if I put something like max fuel, let's see what happens. It will still freak out because max fuel doesn't evaluate to true or false. And so you need to put true or false in there. In other languages, you could put anything in there. And basically, if it's not false, it's always true. And so if you put a number in there, if you put, I don't know, something else in there and it doesn't evaluate to false, it is true. Now, we just said that whatever must be put in here has to evaluate to true or false, even if it's a number or whatever. Well, if we take out this equals equals false, what does this mean? Well, is the car on automatically evaluates to true or false, so we don't even need the equals equals. We don't need to even check for equality here because this will directly evaluate to true or false. So right now it says if the car is on, if that evaluates to true, then we want to set it to true. But that's not what we want. We want if the car is on, if it's false, then we want to set is the car on to true. And so we can add an exclamation point, a bang, right there. And basically now it says if the car is not on, because this means not, then we will change it to true. Now we can add some if statements to other methods that we've created. And so if we go up here to get out, we might want to add an if statement here because what if no one is in the car? Right now, I can keep telling people to get out of the car and ultimately have a negative number of people in my car, which shouldn't happen because it doesn't happen in real life. And so if we do if number of people in car equals equals zero, close that paren, open bracket, hit enter, it'll close the bracket. We can say if number of people in the car equals zero, then subtract, subtract, get the person out of the car. But that's not what we want. We want, if it's not equal to zero, then we want to subtract people. We want people to get out of the car. Since we have numbers, we can actually do greater than, less than. All of those are applicable here. And so we could do a less than and then equal sign, or we could do a greater than and equal sign. And this is how you represent them right here. For this problem, we only want people to get out of the car if there are people in the car. So if the number of people in car is greater than or equal to zero, then people get out of the car. Well, we don't want it to be equal to zero, so we just want greater than zero. So if there's one person in the car, it'll work. If there's five people in the car, someone will get out and then we'll have four people. If there's no one in the car, say zero people, zero is not greater than zero. And so this entire block right here in number of people in car, it will get ignored. It will not be evaluated. It'll be evaluated as much as our comments are evaluated, not at all. Only the if statement will be evaluated here and it'll just kind of skip this line. And then if there's any other code you wanna say, like you could print or you could system.outprint ln, you could print the number of people in the car here and we need to spell it correctly. <laughs> number of people in car. And so if we have something like this, if number of people in car is greater than zero, we subtract someone, and then you can say 
no matter what, I want to print the number of people in my car. So we'll take that away. And we can do the same thing for get in. Obviously, there's a max capacity for your car, so we can create a variable at the top here. And we could say int max number of people in car. And we'll say automatically six. And no more than six can be in our car. And so we'll scroll down here. And we can add an if statement right here. We can say if we're at max capacity for our car, then no one can get in. But if we're less than that, if there's less people than the max capacity in our car, then sure, get in. And so we can say if number of people in car is less than number of whatever I called this variable up here, what did I call it? Max. So we'll say max number of people in car, close the paren, open bracket, close the curly bracket. And so now what happens is if the number of people in car is less than the max number of people in car, then someone can get in, which is good because we want people to get in if there's room. Now let's say we want something to happen if there's too many people in the car. So here we could do system.out.println. We can say someone got in. But what if we want to say you can't get in, the car is full? Well, we can do else here, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and just like this was evaluated only if the if was true, anything inside the else will only be evaluated if this is not true. And there's no middle ground here. Either the if statement, what's in these curly brackets will be evaluated or what's in the else curly brackets will be evaluated. And if you want something to be evaluated no matter what, no matter what the condition in the if statement is, then you can put it down here, whatever happens down here, but not make it a comment. <laughs> and so let's say else system.out.println, we could say the car is full. And then to prove the car is full, we can say number of people in car equals plus the max number of people in car. So now let's say the number of people in car is four, the max number is five, we can add one person, now we have five. But if we have five people in the car, and it's not less than five, it's equal to five, then this will not be evaluated. The car is full, number of people in the car will equal the max number of people in car. And this all works, it makes sense. And because this is a hard less than sign, it will never get to six, seven, or eight people in the car, unless of course the max number of people in car is raised. And so let's mess with this here in the main, and so we'll get rid of this. So we'll do car, Tommy car, equals new car, and this will error because we don't have a constructor that's just the open close parentheses. And we can just create that by doing up here, public car, open close paren, open bracket, close curly bracket, and we don't want anything to change. We'll keep these their same values. And so just doing the car open close parentheses will create our default car. And notice this is not an error. And so we'll use the methods we just messed with. And if we scroll up to get out, we can say, if this doesn't happen, we can do else, open, close curly bracket, and we can print out, print ln, no one is in the car. And then we can add down here for turn the car on, we can say else system.out.println the car is already already on and then we can print out the value of, is the car on and it should be true add that semicolon and up here we can also print out the value of the number of people in car and we forgot the plus here all right and as we showed before you don't need to have the else but you cannot have the else without the if. So you can have the if, don't need the else, but the else needs the if. And then anything else that you want evaluated, no matter what the condition is, you would put here. 
questions. So we'll go down and we'll actually use these methods that we've been working on. And so we have our Tommy car. We'll have someone get out of the car. So we'll do Tommy car dot get out. And so now there should be zero people in the car. And then we'll do Tommy car dot get out. And so if there was one person in the car originally, then we'll have zero people here. Then we'll have negative one here, but the else should catch it and it shouldn't go in the if, and so we should be good in this system here, should print out as well. And then we'll put people in our car, Tommy get in. We'll do this a couple of times, dot get in, just so we can reach that max and see if it stops us from putting too many people in our car. Let's say Tommy car dot get in, Open close the parenthesis here. Tommy car dot get in. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five. Let's add one more person in our car. And so it should tell us like, oh, you have too many people in your car, you can't add anymore. And then we'll do Tommy car dot turn the car on. And this should work initially because we set it to false in our defaults and we're using this constructor. So all the default values will be actually the real values for this Tommy car. And so we have turned the car on. And so that'll be switched to true here in the if statement. And then we'll do Tommy car dot turn the car on. And then for the second one, this statement down here should print out. And so we will play. It'll run. So we'll say no one is in the car, and that's good because after a certain amount, too many people got out and this equals zero, so no one is actually in the car. Then someone got in, 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 someone got in. How many people got in? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the car is already on, and so that equals true. And so if we scroll back up, what did we say our max people in the car? Oh, we said it was six. And so right now six people should be in the car. So if we add another Tommy car dot get in, we should see, yeah, the car is full, six equals six. And so you're at the max capacity. Now for our if statements up here, we can actually add comments to say, like here for turn the car on, we can say, if the car isn't on, turn it on. Otherwise, print out the fact it's on. And basically, these comments will help other people that are reading your code be able to understand it faster because going through certain lines can be really long and really annoying at times when you just want to get like the gist of the code. And so if we scroll back up here, we can do get out. We could say if there's people in the car, then tell one to get out. And again, you do the comments with just the slash slash, which is right by the shift key on the right. And so then tell one person to get out and then we'll say otherwise no one can get out and we'll print that. Scrolling up to our get in, we can do if there aren't too many people in the car, then someone can get in. Otherwise, print out the fact the car is full. And so again, these comments help other programmers that are reading your code, especially for certain conditions that you do and stuff like that. So now we're gonna ditch this program and we're gonna create a new program called Cointoss. And here we are gonna mess with random numbers and how to create them, how to use them in our code. So we will save this, we will save this, and then we will get out of here and go and create that one. So to do this, we can actually close our car here. So we'll do control click and then find close. And we are gonna create a whole new project. So we'll do file, new project, and it's gonna be a Java application. We're staying with the same language and we are gonna call this coin toss. And you can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it coin toss because we are gonna stimulate 
how we toss a coin in real life. It's a random thing. You toss a coin, you get heads or tails. We're making that game here as a project. And so I'm gonna put it in my desktop again. If you want it anywhere else, click browse and you can do that. And this we like, and so we'll just click finish and it'll make a file for us. It'll make the main class for us and give us a bunch of stuff to get started. And so these comments annoy me. So I just take these out and we're taking things out of our class. And so now, instead of having a car object that is similar to an object in real life, we're using a class to represent a game. And so it's not an actual object, it's a game that has rules and that has objects within it. So that's what we're doing. And so again, we are stimulating a coin toss with this program that we're making. And so the first thing we're gonna do is create a method that tosses a coin. And so we'll hit enter here and we're gonna make this method and we are gonna do public and we're gonna have it return an int. And it's either gonna return a zero, which will mean heads, or it's gonna return a one, which will mean tails. And so that was what our int is here. And we'll call this method toss a coin. And then we'll do open close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And how do we toss a coin? How do we get a random number? Because that's essentially what tossing a coin is. You randomize it. There's physics involved, but for all intents and purposes, we think it's random. And it's not a trick coin where both sides are heads or something like that. To do this, we need to call upon the random gods, the randomness out in the world. And Java has its own random generator kind of built in. And so all we have to do is do random, R-A-N-D will be the variable name. And then we'll say new random open close parentheses at the semicolon. And we'll have some errors because we have to import this special thing that basically lets us use the random method. And usually it'll come up on the side here if you're forgetting it. So the reason we had to import this is because it's built into Java, but we didn't have access to it immediately. There are certain things that are given within any Java program that you create initially, like the plus and minus signs, those are always gonna work. You're not gonna need to import anything. But something like random, you might use more rarely, or you're not gonna use it in every program. And so there are certain things out there that are very helpful that you can import and then use in your programs, but it's not all gonna be there initially because they take up a lot of space, they take up a lot of time to import, stuff like that. So you only wanna import things you're using, obviously. And so somehow we're gonna use this random here, this random generator thing to tell us if we have tossed a head or a tails. And so we'll create an int and we'll call this toss and this will be our int that is the coin toss. And we will assign it to, and this is going to be kind of a long statement, so bear with me. We're going to do math.abs. And most math stuff is already like here. You don't have to import it or anything like that, so that's why this pops up here. But you do math.abs, and that just means absolute value. Open paren, and then we'll do rand.nextint. Open close parentheses. And then we'll do something called mod two. And then we'll do a semicolon here. So this is a lot of code. Basically what it means is we are accessing the math class that's in here. And this is a static method. We'll talk more about static later. But basically it means you don't really have to create an instance. You can just access the method directly because it doesn't change an instance. So we're saying this method is in the math class and we're accessing it and the method is absolute value, getting the absolute value of a certain number. And the number we're getting the absolute value of is this next int. And so basically what happens here is rand goes through its thing, grabs a random int, a random integer, a random whole number, it could be 5 billion, 320, whatever it is, but we only want it to be zero or one because we only want two choices. We don't want 5 billion choices for our toss. We just want it to be heads or tails, zero or one. This part of our code gets our number, whatever it is, random, makes it positive, then mods it by two, which basically means, is it divisible by two or not? If it is, then it'll return a zero. If it's not, it'll return a one. And it basically returns the remainder of whatever the number is divided by two. So again, if it's even, zero, not even, one. Very mathy, but yeah, so that'll be our toss, and then we'll do return toss. 
and we should spell return right. <laughs> and this again will return a 0 or 1 because we get the number, whatever it is, 5 billion in the universe, we make it a positive number by doing absolute value, whether it was positive to begin with or not, it'll be positive now, and then we say, is it divisible by 2? Is it even? If so, make it a 0. If not, make toss a 1, and then we'll return that 0 or 1. And so now we'll go into our main function and create a new instance of the toss coin game. And so we'll do coin toss, I don't know, game equals new coin toss game. Because remember the class is only a blueprint, now we're creating the actual instance in our body shop of the main. And then we'll do game dot toss a coin, and there it is. And we'll actually just print this system.out.println into the console so then we can see what numbers are popping up. And then we'll copy this, paste it a bunch of times, and then we can run it and see what we get. So at the bottom here, it's going to run. So we got a bunch of zeros and ones. Very computer science-y. And so the reason we got zero was because the number, whatever the int was, was even. And if we got a one, again, the random int that was picked out of the universe by Java was odd. And instead of printing zeros and ones, we can actually put an if statement in here and say if the toss is a zero, return a head, like a string that says heads. Or if it's one, then we can return the string tails. And so we can change this from returning an int to return a string. And we need to capitalize string. Then we'll hit enter here and we'll say if toss equals equals zero, open close curly bracket and we'll say return heads. And we'll make that all capital. Semicolon and then else open close the curly bracket return tails. Then we'll do that, semicolon, take away our return toss, and there we go. This makes a lot of sense because if the if statement is true, then we have a heads. If the if statement is false, if the toss isn't zero, then we return tails. In the real world, you can't be heads and tails, and so that is why this works really well here. And so if we play now, we should get tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, and it works out perfectly. So in this video, we talked more about class versus instance, the blueprint versus the actual object you're creating. We talked about if and else statements, so you can have if, and then if the condition is true, what happens, otherwise what happens, or you can just have the if, stuff like that. We talked about inequalities, and so if you want to know if something equals something else, you can do the double equals and find out, or you can do not equal with the bang and equal sign, or you can do like greater than, less than, greater than equal, less than equal. We talked about all that. We wrote comments for our if statements if things were true. We explained what the condition was, what we were testing, what we were seeing happened, and then what happened otherwise if the condition was not true. We created a new program called Coin Toss where we stimulated the action of tossing a coin. And we did this with random number generation. And so if the random number was a zero or a one or whatever, it was heads. If it was the other number, then it was tails. And so that's it for this video. The hackering challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.